You've been tuned to WZBC 90.3 FM. My name is John Greeby. We bring you this program, Sounds of Dissent, on Saturdays from 11 until 1, usually. This week uh, will end uh, just before 12 o'clock. It doesn't leave us a heck of a lot of time to take a look at an extremely important subject that's been unfortunately shoved to the sidelines and given little attention in the United States press, especially because of all the attention on the election. Well, now that si- silly season is almost over as the election approaches and uh, news coverage of what the candidates are doing amounts to little more than public relations uh, stenography. We're going to take a little break again from more election coverage and take a look at uh, an issue that has instead affected millions of people, has actually involved the death of several million people. That is in the Democratic Republic of the Congo in the last decade in Central Africa. Our next guest, Kambali Musavuli, is currently an engineering student at North Carolina A&T State University. He's organizing events with the group Friends of the Congo. Welcome to the program, Kambali Musavuli. Thank you for having me. Kambali Musavuli, I'd like to start by asking you a bit about... Uh, I understand you were born in the Congo, lived there for 17 years, and, uh, and are now in the United States. Um, uh, and I, I, the, this is a sort of awareness-raising reek in the United States about what's going on in the Congo. There's, it's such a resource-rich country, and a lot of uh, uh, essential ingredient in cell phones and other small electronics called coltan comes out of the Congo. Uh, but I, I wonder, how is it that those mining and uh, extraction industries play such a big role in the Congo and have interfered with its ability to uh, have self-rule and peace? Yes, um, it's been a very interesting uh, history in the Congo. Um, looking at it from a broader pr- perspective, uh, we've had this issue for about 200 years, going way back through colonialism with uh, Leopold II acquiring the Congo as his personal property. At that time, the resource exploitation was cu- uh, was uh, actually every task and rubber, which helped boom the automobile industry. And that's been really what has been the central source of the uh, conflict in the Congo for about 200 years. And uh, now we've seen it in our latest years as uh, different corporations, multinational corporations, and some U.S.-based corporations, actually extracting the minerals with a lot of illegal exploitation, which they could not do here, and does providing funds for different rebel groups and two governments, specifically in Rwanda and Uganda, extracting illegally the minerals in the Congo. <laughs> The, the United States, the companies that have been involved, uh, have they, uh, have there, has there been a sort of a clear beneficiary in the Congo of the profits of uh, ex- the, the mining industries? Specifically for the United States, there they are quite a, uh, quite a lot of uh, companies, uh, we, but we have uh, been able to find the quick niche of a mineral called coltan. And try to look at at least three companies here in the United States uh, that are exploiting the coltan. You have a Cabot Corporation, OM Group. Uh, you also have HC Stark. They have a base here in America, but they they actually uh, the headquarter is uh, in Europe. Um, Kemet Corporation out of South Carolina. Um, I mean. It's just interesting to see how much money this corporation make on minerals, and the reason of me pointing out coltan is uh, a mineral that virtually every household in America has. Um, as a Senator Brown back stated right back uh, March this year, it's uh, something that uh, actually one of the presidential candidates has brought up. That is. Uh, Representative Cynthia McKinney uh, running under the the Green Party's ticket. She, uh, while she was served in the House International Relations Committee, uh, proposed legislation to stop conventional weapons transfers to governments that are undemocratic or don't respect human rights. She also uh, worked on legislation to end the mining of coltan in eastern DRC in the uh, DR Congo. 
and uh, this received some special mention in, in, in different United Nations reports as well. How uh, important is it for people in the United States and congressional representatives to uh, recognize the the undemocratic and anti-human rights effects uh, of weapons transfers to the Congo right now? I think they have recognized, but they just have not had a political will to stop what's happening. I, I'm, pre- I'm very sure uh, that uh, the American politics politicians know about the Congo. My personal experience with uh, Bradley Miller, he has sponsored two resolutions to stop uh, sexual uh, violence uh, in the Congo. He's been in the Congo in the past four years, twice. Um, and uh, just a quick uh, feedback. Sen- um, his name is uh, Samuel Badman. He's the ex-CEO of Cabo Corporation out of uh, Boston, Massachusetts. He is the Secretary of Energy at this moment for George W. Bush. And his company was listed as one of the companies that are illegally exploiting the Congo in the UN expert pan- panel that you referred earlier that uh, can be found at the United Nations website. Yet, it was voted unanimously by the Senate as the Secretary of Energy. So I, I feel that if they did vote for him, they had to have a quick background on who he was, depending on what his affiliation may have been, to, for him to be now the Secretary of Energy. So I do feel that the American politician know what's happening in the Congo. He actually came in a debate, um, the second debate, when they asked about um, what, what is the United States role in engaging in um, the wars that do not affect the national security of, um, of the United States. Yet, I uh, could not see a clear answer for the two political candidates, which I feel that they, they know what's going on, but the American people are not informed. This is why we are engaging in a campaign to educate uh, the United States uh, citizen as well as the world population about the extent of the conflict in the Congo, where you have nearly 6 million people who have died since ninety six, forty five thousand 45,000 people dying every month. 1,200 people a day, you have 200,000 registered rape victims due to the conflict in the Congo. Can you imagine how many women are not registered and still running, and yet there is no political will to stop the conflict? You said nearly 6 million people in the last 12 years. That is correct. Who, who is funding? What is funding? Uh, some of this conflict and the, the weapons flow into the Congo? It's um, the scramble for Congo's mineral resources. We have so much resources, um, from copper to uranium to cobalt, which is used in your hybrid batteries. You know, Toyota Prius has 2.1 kilograms of that, to coltan, which is a very important piece that I really wanted to touch on. Um, coltan is a mineral found in the DRC, 80% of the world reserve of cotton is in the Congo, and it is virtually in uh, every electronic equipment, such as laptop, computers, cellular phone, jet engine, rockets, uh, x-ray film, digital camera, video cameras, virtually every electronic used to tell them in it. And um, as uh, you will look through the flow of cotton and how modern technology have used that, you will see that there is a high, high demand that's requiring the supply. And with the major corporation that I mentioned earlier, uh, you, I will speak about, again, the U.S.-based uh, company, Cabot Corporation, OM Group, AVX, Eagle Wind, Resource International, Kemet Electronic Corporation out of Greenville, Vishay Sprague in Pennsylvania. They need those raw materials so they could provide that to their suppliers, I mean to their buyers, which will be companies such as Nokia, Motorola, and so on and so forth, which will need those. Intel as well um, uses Caltan, which will make it easier for them to have cheaper product. But by acquiring those minerals for war-torn countries is very easy to see that it does found the war. Why? The rebel militia and foreign government involved in the east of the Congo will use those funds 
to arm themselves. You also have company like Katanga Mining, who um, who had um, allegation into the United Nations report with the illegal trade of arms in the Congo, still funding rebel groups and giving them weapons. And the United Nations also has been involved into selling weapons with the Pakistanis uh, peacemakers there selling weapons in exchange for gold. Um, and uh, right now the Cong- Congolese uh, government and uh, activists are pursuing the case to bring them to justice in that case. And, uh, but with all these different forces, foreign corporations, foreign governments, and uh, working in accord with multilateral institutions like IMF and World Bank and the local elites, they are able to loot it and provide financial support to rebel groups and ba- create a balkanization of the Congo where the minerals, mineral wealth can easily be taken away from the Congolese and found the rebel militias. I'm, I'm very glad that we were able to have have you during this time, Kambale Musa Wuli. I'm, I'm sorry we didn't have more time. Uh, we have to conclude the program at this point, but I want to thank you very much and let people know they can find out more information about the week of breaking the silence about the Congo at the website congoweek.org. You can also look at friendsofthecongo.org. So, Kimbale Musavuli, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. Kambale Musavuli is an engineering student at North Carolina A&T State University. He was born and lived in the Congo for 17 years. He's helping organize events with the group Friends of the Congo at the website friendsofthecongo.org. Uh, the Breaking the Silence campaign is at congoweek.org. You're tuned to WZBC in Newton, 90.3 FM. Thanks for joining us today in this limited one-hour edition of the program. We'll be back next week for two hours of Sounds of Descent at 11 o'clock. For me and all of our team here, thank you for listening. Our producer in the studio this week is Greg Mayu. I'm John Greeby. Join us Saturdays at 11 for two hours of Sounds of Descent on 90.3 FM, WZBC in Newton. Tonight and every Saturday from 7 to 10 on Caribbean Forum in Creole and English, Raymond and Yvonne bring you Caribbean Forum. Tomorrow and every Sunday morning from 6 to 10 o'clock, Truth and Justice Radio brings you more news and public affairs, including the weekly segment This Week in Palestine with Sharif Pham, beginning at 9 o'clock Sunday mornings. WZBC presents Democracy Now! every weekday at 12 noon for an hour, all here on 90.3 FM. Call with your questions, comments, news of your own. We'd love to hear what you think about the programs at 617 552 3511. That's 552 3511. Let's meet again next Saturday at 11. Boston College Sports Saturday is next with a live broadcast of the away football game. <laughs>